Welcome to MCOM Solutions. Today we're going to do a more in-depth look at the Beartooth Mark II radios. I received my two radios a little bit ago when I was in the U.S. and I've gotten to do some testing with them. I will be doing a lot more as, as time goes by and I get different um, test uh, environments like out rural and uh, you know anything else I can think of to kind of throw at them to see how they perform but my initial results are all good and I wanted to elaborate more and tell you guys more about them to hopefully answer some questions that I've already received if you have additional questions after this video is over or during the video plug them into the comments section and in future videos I will do my best to answer those or answer them in the comment section if it's just something real easy and quick um, so I will note though there's a few notes I have to disclaim right one, I'm not affiliated with Beartooth. Uh, the the most the freest things I've gotten from Beartooth, other I bought those two radios out of my own own hard earned monies, is this hat, a couple patches, and a couple pins. So just for full uh, transparency, I purchased these myself. Uh, when I put the link for Beartooth down below and their 40% off discount that they got going on, I get no monies from that. So. Um, um, that is your choice to purchase them. Next note, if you're upset about the price, they're about $1,200, $1,250 for a set, somewhere in there. I don't know exactly right at the moment because when I purchased them, I think it was 50% off. Now it's 40% off, but the, um, if you don't need this capability, I'm not telling you to buy these radios. I'm pre presenting you with information about a radio because here at MCOM Solutions we're about providing people with information solutions to solve the problems they may have with their emergency communications plan. So if your plan is solid and you feel like you don't need to make any changes, you're using Meshtastic, you're using your Baofeng radio and your cell phone and those are your three devices that, that help you meet your pace plan for whatever scenario it is that you've created, good. If you have questions and problems that you need solved in the future, hit me up and I will help you solve those problems. That's what we're here for. Don't get pissed off about the price. If you're an amateur radio operator, these are fairly cheap. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not telling you that I just spent $1,200 and just thought, oh, no big deal. It was a significant purchase that I had to make a very conscious decision about. Uh, even, you know, getting an approval from household six or those who may not know what that is my wife um so <laughs> before i just spent you know our money on these radios so all that aside one last little thing mesh radios meshtastic are mesh radios but not all mesh radios are meshtastic if you're new i've been doing meshtastic for over the meshtastic videos are about Meshtastic for over two years now. So I'm a user and will continue to be a user of Meshtastic. So this is not a slam on Meshtastic. It's technology, it's radio technology. We love sharing that type of information here. So if you like all that, stay and listen to what we have to say, all right? So basic features we're gonna be dealing with here is of course your typical mesh radio, which is advanced mesh networking, doing these self-forming, self-healing networks line of sight up to 30 miles which you could probably get further than that in certain scenarios or situations you can direct message you can group message you have push to talk voice you will see that here in the video hey youtube you ready for an advanced mesh radio welcome to mcom solutions today we're going to be going over the Beartooth mark ii radio You also have photo sharing capabilities where ATAC literally will give you like the azimuth the photo was taken from and a lot of other data that I will be blurring out to protect me with my OPSEC uh, so that weirdos don't come trying to knock on my door. Um, you can share data package, which was in ATAC. It's really 
Um, like you can capture some information on the map that you've put in symbols or other data and share that with somebody else uh, in your group or direct message to them so it has up to a two-day battery life i've the longest testing i've done so far is about five to six hours um, i would imagine you probably wouldn't get two days if you were constantly using them they have a 300 milliamp internal battery but they also claim they have some, you know, built into their firmware software that, you know, it must go into like some sort of sleep mode or something to detect when it's not active to conserve battery life to get the best possible battery life, which is cool. But we'll be testing that as we go on and see if those claims are anywhere close to true, right? So technical specifications, uh, we talked about the battery, it connections, it comes with a USB to USB-C connector which it charges via USB-C here in the top it has an on off toggle switches it's a great feature I know a lot of people are starting to add those to their mesh tastic radios because most of them don't come with them from the factory and then all you have to do sometimes you get it to turn off through certain buttons but then it comes back on and then next time you go to use it it's dead these every time I've turned them off and went back to go grab one turned it back on it wasn't dead which is which is good. The case is a nylon 12, some sort of laser or something. I'll put it in the video because, or in the down below here in the text, because I'm not quite sure. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head. I did ask Michael about that because uh, I didn't know. Uh, and Michael's the CEO, if you don't know that, uh, for Beartooth. Um, security, we already talked to the uh, 256 bit AES encryption. They have a low probability of detection, low probability of being able to intercept the network. How is that possible? Well, they have done some testing with the US military and found that their claims to be true. Um, how is that, right? They Well, they operate in what band? The ISM band, which makes them license free. Um, so that's great for all of us that don't wanna get a license or have a license but then also want to be able to use other cool toys they um, use frequency hop spread spectrum in their modulation throw that in the encryption throw in low hour power output of one watt three dbms which is more than all my mesh test devices i don't know about yours and so may give you a little more range there the um <clears throat> excuse me so in that process, you also got to take some consideration because I consideration because I know I'm going to get somebody out there is going to be like, oh, on 10 seconds, I, I'd pinpoint you and be at your front door. All right, cool. Good for you. You're awesome. I don't know. But uh, everyone seems to claim to have some really advanced capabilities out there. Um, but when I ask them questions, they never reply back to the comments. So and I'm genuinely con actually want to ask. I'm not going to be a jerk about it. I just. People make claims in comments, and then I ask them, well, how would you do that? Because I, I really would like to know, because I would like to know the vulnerabilities of things, and crickets, right? So, all right, <laughs> moving on. I might be in a mood today, who knows? Uh, well, so basically, if you're working especially in a suburban, urban type area, go ahead and turn on your, your, uh, your software-defined radio, and plug in, get the plug in, the what is it, the 433 uh, plug in. I have it, I've done it. Uh, and you can start to decode stuff out there. And this is what a lot of people are talking about. There may be something more that I'm not aware of. So go ahead and let me know if you, if you do know some of the other things. And you can decode things like, oh, look, this car, someone just hit the remote. Anywhere from the 800 to you know, of course, you got up into the gigahertz stuff, but 900 frames, there is tons of noise there. People's freaking uh, cars, their smart devices, their IoT devices are broadcasting little messages on that stuff because it's the ISM band and people don't have a license, don't have to have a license. So therefore, there's lots of things. If you're out in the middle of nowhere, yes, it probably would be a whole lot easier to find you, but I'll get off that and we'll keep moving. We already talked about the range, about 30 miles. 
we'll be testing some range testing in long range kind of uh, rural type areas in the near future. Supports up to six hops, over 100 nodes, which is more than what you can do with your Mestas device. We already talked about the one watt. It is compatible with Android, iOS, and of course your ATAC app. ATAC we'll talk here in a second. Um, it is also compatible with a couple push to talk earpieces. I wasn't familiar with that. I'll put the name of those devices down below. I'm gonna be looking into that and maybe picking up some for future uh, testing. On to test results. So I'm gonna just tell you really the first thing I noticed is I got them, I opened up the box, I connected the antenna. I already had ATAC installed because I've been playing around with Mestastic and ATAC. I downloaded the plugin from the Play Store, the Beartooth plugin. Um, I unloaded the Mestastic plugin because it would interfere, right? Because uh, it was trying to connect, I think, whatever. It just, I unloaded it so it wasn't causing me problems. It's still there so I can reload it when I want to. Um, and paired the device like in minutes after everything was downloaded and I was up and communicating, sending the text messages. Took me a few seconds to figure out how to get through and send the push to talk. Took me a little bit longer to figure out how to send a photo. Um, but once I did all that, I was I was up like within 15 to 20 minutes, I, I basically figured out all the basic features and we're using them. Um, I think that is awesome because a lot of people don't want to have something that is very complicated to get set up um, especially when you talk unlicensed license free side right that's why when you buy a lot of these GRMS radios and stuff that's what people like about them they just have channels they flip them talk they know which ones are for the repeaters they know it's whatever uh, on the amateur radio side we're a little more used to having to program things and use uh, you know software to build your channels lists and all this other stuff you want in there. If you're using a DMR, you're doing code plug and all that DMR radio, sorry, digital mobile radio. Um, you know, you're learning code plugs and all that other stuff, which can be very complicated. Or if you're lucky, like myself, you have someone in your group that is really good at it and they just push out a code plug update every time. And I've learned a little bit of it, to be honest, but uh, not that great at it. So anyways, I digress. And they just work. That is awesome. Range, I'm seeing range, which has basically been suburban, urban type range testing, one to three miles in the testing I've done, which included dense uh, forest from my home into town. Um, so that's about what I approximately, I get with most of the time with my mesh testing devices to include, but that's usually with my, my little repeater kind of up at a higher altitude on my property because of the way the layout is. So I'm seeing uh, on the surface, I've seen a little better range. Time will tell on that, okay? So I'm gonna wrap up with, because someone asked me this question and maybe I should have done a separate video. Oh, maybe I'll do another video. I don't know. Let me know. Beartooth Mark II versus Mestastic because there's a lot of, if you go on Facebook, there's some pretty heated information on there from people like being upset like to, even to the point where people were like Beartooth stealing mesh tech mesh tech uh, mesh tastic technology I, i'm not even going to entertain that one today i did a video about it in the past so um the difference is really what i'm going to say is the fact that they're refined ready to go yes there's way more since i started with mesh tastic there's way more off the shelf ready radios but you still have the the little things that are can get can be hard for some people. They're they're not. I mean, if it takes me thirty minutes or an hour to figure out a problem with one, I can't imagine someone that that just just doesn't like to deal with tech problems, right? So uh, technical problems. That's why a lot of people I get messages all the time on my Mestastic videos like I am lost. I need help. I have no idea. I bought these things. I got them working. Now they don't work. I can't talk to each other radios. And what they've probably done is they've gone in the settings and they've screwed things up and they don't realize they've done it. And it's really hard to solve some problem like that over a comment section and a YouTube video. So that's why I encourage people to join my Telegram group, which is down below for Mestastic type questions. Little plug there. All right. 
And the hugest difference between the two, and this is something only if, and you're going to pay significantly more for this, but where are you going to get that? I've been an amateur radio operator for many, many years, and um, I can't send photos. <laughs> there is some ways to do that, but um, you know, with the current radios and the equipment I have, that's not something I can do with amateur radio. And you can send photos, you can send voice which of course i can do with amateur radio but i don't have encryption uh i don't have the mesh technology i don't have frequency hot spread spectrum i don't have any of that that i have with one of these radios so um i'm just telling you that is the hugest difference if that is what you need then you're probably going to figure out a way to budget for them um if it is not what you need, stick with Mestastic. If you know how to use Mestastic devices right now and they're working for you, stay with them. I'm staying with mine, but I'm also using these. So I am diversifying, but I'm here, this content, what I do here on YouTube and what I'm kind of doing is my little side thing and it might get bigger and bigger in the future, that's at least my plan, is trying to provide you, my audience, my supporters, my the greater space, a, a platform that they can come to and learn and help answer questions they may have and figure out what device they may need to solve their communication problems. So if that is all cool with you, hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up, check out our social media links down below. You can follow us along there. You can check out our Telegram group, our website, our playlist, uh, our mesh, resources playlist will be here in the video. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.